Hey, good morning. It's cold out here. Happy Thanksgiving. You know what we got in the background. You know what that is? Some of you folks probably remember that. It's uh, not too far from Oakwood, right along the interstate. It's, uh, it's a silo. It's where they store grain. Why am I shooting this right now? What do we think about on Thanksgiving? Well, we remember that old story about you know, the pilgrims and what they did and how they survived and what they kept. And we know that it was a tough time for them. Because places like this, this place is a relic. It's, uh, it's not used anymore. Uh, I, wanna make a com I wanna make a comment about that. I'm uh, just gonna show you this. Look at the size of this. Look, what it, look, the, look at the structure, look at the design. To me, this is a piece of artwork. This is really a testimony to American farming ingenuity. Think of what went into that. If you go in there, it's huge. It's a, it's a dynamic structure. Um, you see the uh, cupolas on the top, you know, for the ventilation. It's an amazing structure, um, but it's a relic. Oh, well, I'll discuss that more. Anyway, welcome to um, Thanksgiving Day. I know it's been uh, it's been a, a joy for us to have a chance to, to visit with you. Stay tuned. I'll I'll say a few more things. Back again. Today's uh, Thanksgiving Day. I'd like to read this Psalm for you. Psalm 100. Uh, take notice of the words that are used in this psalm. It talks about what we can do with our voice. It says, shout for, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us, and, not, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Verse 5, this is the whole psalm. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues throughout all generations. That's you and I. Here we are standing outside this old barn. We're out here um, on the plains and it's pretty, it's pretty windy, it's pretty cold. Most people in their right minds would probably be inside. But I'm standing out here because I, I'm, I'm remembering what it means to be on the land. It says some pretty important things in scripture. You know that story where it talks about uh, how in America we, uh, we, we celebrate the first Thanksgiving. You know that thing about the, the pilgrims. Well, <clears throat> it was a pretty devastating time for those, that fo for those folks. But the reason they were able to uh, survive is, a, is an amazing story about the man that came to, uh, came to the rescue. And his name was Squanto. He was, a, he was an Indian, and his, uh, it's a very long story, but I'll just quickly tell you. About uh, 1605, something, or something like that, he was, uh, he was taken by some English traders back to England so they could teach him, uh, so they could teach him English with the idea that they would take him back to uh, the New World, back to what we call America. There he would be. Uh, he would be available when new settlers settlers would come, and he would be their help and aid. So he was taken back on a boat, back to uh, the New World. But uh, the captain of the ship betrayed him, and instead of taking him back to the New World, he was taken back to Europe, other parts of Europe, and sold as a slave. Some monks uh, took pity on him. And they bought him, and they trained him, and they shared the gospel, they shared Christianity with him. And in so doing, uh, he, Squanto, became a believer, a follower of, uh, aware of the Christian faith. He went back to England and made his way, I'm not sure quite all the details, but he made his way back to America. Whereupon he uh, was taken, he landed in uh, a place not close to his home, he eventually made it back to where his village was, and uh, lo and behold, his village was totally wiped out. Um, a disease had come in, 
and totally destroyed everyone there. There was nothing left. He had no one of his own tribe. He left and he spent uh, he spent the winter at a neighboring uh, tribe's house, a neighboring neighboring tribe's uh, village. And of all things, a man by the name of um, uh, what was it? Uh, he was one of the uh, he, he was another Indian. He had gone and he went to the place where Squanto's old village was, and lo and behold, there on that site were a bunch of Englishmen. Yeah, they were the first pilgrims. And they told Squanto about it, and Squanto came back to the site of his own village, his old village, now devoid of people. It had been prepared, and uh, all his uh, previous, all of the people from his village had been and had died. And now there, on that same place, were these, were these Englishmen. Squanto made the decision to go and help them to get through the years and and was basically he was their savior it's a great story what if Squanto would have said no I'm not going to do that you know those white people they betrayed me well in his uh, awareness of what God does for us it's really important that he did what Squanto did what he did and I say that because it's important for you and I to do what we do. Did you notice in this passage, I just read this passage, there were how many actions that led to <clears throat> what people had to say? Shout for joy, worship the Lord, know the Lord, give thanksgiving, have praise, have praise to all the generations. That's what we're called to do. There's another passage that we're reading for today. It's a very short one verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. It said, It is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. I believe, therefore I spoke. I'll say that again. I believed, therefore I spoke. With that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. I think you get my point. If we don't share what we have, if we don't give of our own hearts, and the belief that we have in our minds and our lives, if we don't share that, then nothing gets accomplished. We need to respond. We need to respond with a gratitude that comes from a heart that has been redeemed, that has been rescued. Here's the passage for today. It's from, uh, it's one of my favorite passages from Luke chapter 17. I really enjoy this passage. And I think it sets a tone for all of us. It says the apostles, those 12 disciples, came to the Lord and they said, Increase our faith. He replied, If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and it will be planted in the sea and it will obey you. He said, So you also, when you have done everything you are told to do, should say, We, we are unworthy servants. We, must, we have only done our duty. Here's the parable. Listen carefully. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. <clears throat> when he saw them, he said, go and show yourselves to the priest. And so they went and as they went they were cleansed one of them when he saw he was healed came back praising God in a loud voice he threw himself at Jesus feet and thanked him and he was a Samaritan Jesus asked were not ten cleansed where are the other nine was no one found to return and praise God pray, give praise to God except this foreigner then he said to him, rise and go, your faith has made you well. I'm going to unpack that for a bit. When they came to Jesus, and obviously they were at the bottom of the rung, they were close to death, their bodies were being destroyed by this horrible disease. There were, they had no friends, no pity, except when they came to Jesus, they simply said, help us. There were 10 of them. And he said, uh, go and show yourselves to the priest. Now he told him, 
do your duty and go to the priest as, as Jesus was wont to do. So they went, and as they were as they were going, they were cleansed. You see the word cleansed? They were cleansed, which means their body was were healed. All the disease and all the stain was was removed. So their bodies were healed. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back. Now Jesus had told him, go to the priest. But he was a wiser man because he decided, I'm going to go back to the source of my, of my curing. It says he came back praising God in a loud voice. I can imagine when that guy, when that leper now cleansed, remember his body was soft as a baby's behind. He was clean. He was, he was clean. He had no fear. He had the thing that he'd, he'd, he'd prayed for. He'd hoped for, beyond hope, it was now his. And he was, my guess, he came running up to Jesus from a distance and he was just yelling as loud as he could. Jesus stands back there, looks around, and he's probably thinking, this is what people need to do. People need to act this way when they've been touched by God's providence. It says, verse 16, then he threw himself down <clears throat> at Jesus' feet. He threw himself down on the ground at Jesus' feet. He could have been laughing, he could have been crying. He was, he was truly obedient. And then it says, and he thanked him. He thanked him. Basic stuff, give thanks. This is Thanksgiving. Okay, here's the point. This, this leper who had nothing I was going nowhere, no future, no hope, no life, nothing. He was given a healthy body and he knew what to do. It says, as they went, they were cleansed, meaning his body was clean. Catch this. As he was going, his body was cleaned. He turned around, <clears throat> he saw he was healed. He, pray, he, he ran back toward Jesus praising him with a loud voice, praising, which we're told to do on this day to praise God. He threw himself at Jesus' feet. He submitted himself to Jesus and he thanked him. What does it take to thank God? Now, everything that this man did was in the presence of other people. Do you know how strong a witness that is when we thank God in the presence of other people? We can, we can crawl over and, you know, we can sort of hide and not tell anybody. We can do that. What does God want us to do? He wants us to thank people and when other people hear it, they too are encouraged. Threw himself down at Jesus' feet and thanked him and he was a Samaritan. Catch this last phrase. And Jesus said, we're not, we're not all ten cleans. Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. You see the difference? His body was already cleaned. But now Jesus says, your faith has made you well. He did not just have a clean body. The interior was cleansed as well. He now was, he was whole. He was complete. Because of his faithfulness, the earlier part of the passage says, we are unworthy servants. We have simply done our duty. For you and I as Christians, what is our duty? Our duty is to give thanks and praise to God. That is our duty. That's why we're here. That's why we exist. That's why we walk the land. That's why we go to every place we go to. We have opportunities to share and give to others the truth that we know about what God has done for us. It is truly, it is truly crucial that we do this. A couple things I want to, <clears throat> I want to add to this. There was a man named Abraham Kuyper. Oh, probably 100, ah, 120 years ago. He was a um, he was a teacher. Um, he was a clergyman, and he was also the prime minister of the country of Holland. He said there are two prime things we need to have. 
The first one is we need to have faith in God. We need to know about our faith. We need to believe it. We need to understand it. We need to work with it. And the second thing is we need to tell others. We need to have it. We need to share it. We need to have it. We need to share it. We have in our church, the ladies in our uh, quilting group, they, uh, they made a lovely uh, uh, quilt for us. It's now hanging in the, uh, the entranceway to the sanctuary. It's got the letters T and there's two, the two T's, a T and a T. That stands for an interesting phrase. The phrase is truth teller. We need to be tellers of truth. The time is now, the time is today, the time is in this period of our history. The truth needs to be told. Then who is, when it says tell truth, that's a great phrase. There's a verb and there's a noun. The verb is to tell, the noun is truth. What does it mean to tell? Now it doesn't say no truth, it says tell truth. If we know it, if we have it, we need to say it. It needs to be explicit. It's like Abraham Kuyper said, we need to make sure people hear it. If we don't, if it's not heard from us, from whom will it come? And the more of the us's of there, that there are that say that, the more likely it is that people hear it, believe it, learn it, and follow that. It's really crucial. Truth, truth is the verb, excuse me, uh, tell is the verb, truth is the, is the noun. What is truth? Well, you know, we all hear, we can hear all those statements about, well, your truth is your truth, but your truth is not necessarily my truth. I have a different truth than you. Um, that flies in the face of what our Christian faith tells us. We believe that as Christians, what Jesus says in John chapter 14, he makes the declaration, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ is the truth. We are called upon to make sure that we talk about him and declare his, his ministry, his life, his death, his resurrection as truth. We are called to be those servants. In the book of James, it's, there's a really cool verse. It says, he who knows what to do and fails to, and does not do it, he who knows what to do and does not do it, sins. Whoa, that's pretty severe. If you know what to do, but you don't do it, that's a sin. If you know you're supposed to be honest, but you choose not to be honest, well, that's not healthy. That's a sin. And I know that word sin, people don't like to hear that word these days. How dare you make that accusation? Um, we had years ago in uh, the town of Royal, where I live, we had a man, he was, a, he was in his car, and the car stopped on the railroad track. Yeah, many of you that hear this know the story. And the guy was on the railroad track, and he wouldn't get out. So another guy named Marvin, he comes along, and he, um, he says, you better, get out of that, you better get out of that car, because <laughs> if you don't, it's going to be curtains, buddy. And the guy didn't want to get out of his car. He didn't want to leave his car. So Marvin gets him out of the car, and he drags him off the railroad track just as the... As, this, this train comes and plows into this car. And had Marvin chosen not to get out and aid that man, had he not chosen to get out and aid that man, the man would have died. He who knows what to do and does not do it, sins. If you and I know about Jesus and we choose not to tell him, then that's an affront to God. Oh, and we will always hear it, the statement made. Well, we can just, uh, we can share our faith by our actions. And that's true, we can. Uh, we can show that, but the gospel needs to be explained by words. You know, you can mow a guy's yard for, you know, years and years and years. You can go out and help somebody do their grocery shopping. You can help somebody paint their barn. You can help somebody fix their tire. You can help them say, do and say all those things. That's a good example. But if the, if, the, if the tag is never put there that your faith is born in Jesus Christ, if they never hear about Jesus, how will they ever know that all your good works are tied to your relationship with Christ? 
pretty key. Having said that, um, we are in this season right now, today, this is Thanksgiving. Blessings to you. May your days be filled. Uh, may you echo the sentiments of gratitude because we're given today as a chance to share what we share the grace that we have received. Thanksgiving. Thanks has been given to us. Uh, we have been given those things. And thank with thanks, we give that to others. We give thanks to the Heavenly Father. We give thanks to the Lord Jesus for what he's done. We give thanks for all the cultures and all the peoples, all the languages, all the different things on the planet because all those things come from God himself. All of them, all those things are gifts from God to us. And this day, may you rejoice with Thanksgiving, not just the meal that you eat, but with the conversations you have and the prayers that you offer. Blessings to you. Um, may your days be filled with gratitude in your hearts. And may you see things and do things that will cause you to reach out to any and all across every culture, across any language, across any situation. Because everyone, <clears throat> everyone needs to know that they're cared for by a loving God. And I believe those of you that are listening, I think you know what I'm saying. Please tell someone in these days and the days to come how blessed they are because they live here. Be part of the joy that they can experience. Take care. Blessings to you. <laughs> Thank, happy Thanksgiving.